Hi, I'm David the Bruce. This is Visual Hollywood, where we take a femme-centric point of view of Hollywood. Yes, we make women visible. Yes. <laughs> and boy, you're going to enjoy this show, man. We've got so much in store for you. I guarantee you, we'll put a smile on your face, a spring in your step, and tell you things you did not know. Coming up, I'm David the Bruce. Whatever's in there has been safely hidden for 2,000 years. This isn't a tomb, it's a prison. Nick! The hieroglyph said she was named Amunet, chosen to be Egypt's next queen. But her thirst for power led her down a darker path, one that had to be stopped. Because of your actions, this ancient power has returned. You are alive because you were chosen. Chosen? By what? Evil. The ultimate evil. Legend has it she's a being of unimaginable powers. Now she's using you <laughs> to regain them. She will not stop until she has remade our world into her own. Stay with me. I'm scared. I'm gonna figure this out. Don't leave me. You can't run. You can't escape. She's got plans for you. I think what you will see is the story of, um, uh, you know, a 5,000 year old, um, Egyptian princess who, um, made a bargain with essentially with the devil and it was thwarted and she's now come to modern day to complete that bargain. And Tom's character, Nick, finds himself right in the middle of that problem. Um, because he is going to be the conduit by which she will complete her bargain. And the minute we decided to make her a woman, it opened up huge story possibilities, just brand new doors that suddenly felt fresh. And it raised really interesting and timeless questions. And it gave her a backstory that I hadn't seen before. And it's very hard in any movie to come up with villains who have an interesting and unique backstory. Um, and when, but it felt so immediately right. It was just that Lego click of like, that's it. That's what it's gotta be. And um, at first people were like, really? It's never been done. I don't know. And I was like, yes, it's never been done. <laughs> That's the point. And then people got on board very quickly. And the first person to recognize it immediately was Tom. There was something very fun about watching Tom, the polarity of these two women w moving around Tom, um, that I loved. And I think he loved and, um, makes his character more interesting, makes the two of them more interesting. It just makes the whole situation more unique. Um, uh, because ultimately... Nick is torn between these two women, um, and these two women represents two different sides of him, you know, and uh, and the question is where will he end up? Prodigium is an organization that has existed for uh, a long time. Um, we only hint in this movie at how long they've been around, and they study monsters. Um, they they study the mythologies of monsters, the histories of them, uh, what makes a monster, what different cultures 
what what kinds of monsters exist in different kinds of cultures, where they come from. Um, it's a science for them. Um, and what I liked about that idea was if we're going to endeavor to ground the monsters in a reality, um, then let's do that. Let's, let's ground it in science. The truth is that in order to get an audience to love a character like that, you got to be a movie star. It's really that simple. <laughs> um, because, you know, Tom's character over the course of this movie pretty much makes every wrong choice. And yet he's really likable. And you have to convey that quality in who you are. It's not really something you can act. It's just something that you are. Um, I love that about Tom. As an audience member, I've loved his movies for that for a long time because he he plays the anti-hero, or not even the anti-hero, he plays very flawed characters in a very entertaining and relatable way. They are so respectful of each other. I mean, they're fans of each other's work. So first and foremost, they were just excited to be on set together and get the opportunity to be in a scene with each other, you know, and be in several scenes with each other. And, you know, when you have two actors who are Tom Cruise and Russell Crowe, who are, you know, arguably two of the best actors of all time, um, often your job is to stand back and let them do, their, do, do what they do. He brings a buoyancy to the character. He brings a weird, um, quirky charm to the character, um, a kind of humor to it that is a little unexpected. Um, he was really having fun with the part. And, you know, I always tend to feel like if, if the actor's having fun with the part, the audience will too because, you know, to get to watch somebody like that do their thing that way is, is amazing. It was Sophia or nobody. And, um, and, and because in, in so many ways, to, to bring a physical credibility and an emotional credibility to the part, you know, you, you don't get that right and you don't have a movie. You know, you could have Tom Cruise in it, but if the mummy didn't work, you do not have a movie. And um, so I met with Sophia and uh, it was very interesting because she was very hesitant at first. She said, well, I don't know. I don't know if, you know, I just came off a movie where I did like six hours of makeup and I don't know if I want to go through that again. And I said, I understand, but here's the thing. You have to do it. Like, you have to do this movie. I literally can't make this movie without you. And before the meeting, I had uh, done a lot of drawings of her rendered as the mummy. And she thought I was kidding when I was like, no, you don't understand. There's nobody else for me. And I pulled these images of her out and she went, I saw her face kind of go, whoa. Like, she didn't expect it. And um, and then she understood that I was very serious about protecting her character and about about how uh, I think original and different it was going to feel with her. Armanet understood power was not given; it had to be taken. She made a choice to embrace evil. It was important to find the psychology of, of the character and understand why she did what she did because she had to and have people just you know feel for her and and I think that was the goal because I think it's too easy just to make it obvious that she's just mean or hateable. Oh Tom, I love him. I love him. I love being on set with him. I think he's fantastic and amazing. I remember I got on set, I was like, wait a minute. I'm on set with Russell Crowe and Tom Cruise right at the same time. And I was just basically observing them and just watching those guys. They're so good at what they do and been doing it for such a long time. And I'm, I'm still so very green and new to this craft and I'm learning every single day. The most impressive set <laughs> that I've walked on was the Crusader's Chamber uh, because of the size and the scale of it all and, and, and the 
and the walls, the rocks, and the, 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 all the feel and the energy. It was even humid in there. And it was, there was this echo. You really felt like you were in there so realistic and so nicely done. Um, you just feel in, instantaneously inspired. Being on set with Alex is a great moment and uh, talking about film and cinema and movie making with Tom is, is such a blessing. He's been doing that for such a long time and he's so good at it. He's such a good actor. And um, being on set with Annabelle, she's lovely, she's funny and everybody's great on this movie. I think the audience should expect to, to be transported, to um, travel. <laughs> To in, not only in, in, in space but in time and they can expect to be entertained and be amused and have a laugh while being maybe hopefully excruciatingly terrified <coughs> How does Nick factor in Jenny's world? Well, he's quite a mischievous character that comes along her path and they together are quite the iconic duo. You know, they, they, they love to hate each other, but I think love is, is the common thread and there is a real mirroring of, of two very similar human beings, uh, both kind of driven by this you know this this willpower to to kind of explore and to honor their wanderlust for life and adventure. Amanet is um, the driving force of Jenny's life, of her purpose. You know she's she's given up everything to really find this this um, mysterious creature that her mother, you know, told her so much about, and and it's really become what's defined her as a human being. So. She is everything to Jenny. She is the answer to so much. What's wonderful about Alex is that he, he very much sees the character in each of his actors and he really wants to bring that out of them. And with me, he, he very much wanted to bring my own truth, you know, the elements of me that were similar to the character and, and, and really trust them and enjoy them and, and be playful with them. And, connect on a human side to the audience and, and really Jenny is a lot of the heart of the film you know and, and the emotional compass in many ways. I think you know as, as, as an actress I think I'm very clear about the women that I want to play and the, the type of woman that I am and that's uh, in my mind a, a strong willful um, many shades of grey complex human being and I like to portray women who have real um, passion and drive and that are equal to the men and someone like Tom Cruise he, he very much empowers the females in his movies and that was a real incentive for me. I mean the size of this movie is breathtaking and that's really how you feel when you walk onto these sets. I mean the workmanship, the skills like all around from the different departments it's just mind-blowing and it's so humbling, you know, you, you really realize that you're just a cog in a huge wheel. What the hell is that? Go, go, go! You can do it. 
do this! You can do this! I want to see a monster movie now. I I only go for things like what I I love movies. I go you know I go to the theater to watch films. I'm, I'm watch you know a movie a day, um, and I am hungry to as an audience to see a film like this. Uh, I want to be scared. I want to be entertained. I want to I want it in a way that it's um, thrilling. Put me on the edge of my seat. We've been really pushing the edges of, of storytelling. Of you know, this this film is going to have really obviously great action, uh, real, real thrills, real scares, uh, and wonderful you know kind of character humor that that I love within it. Very, I think, uh, kind of dark humor that that I want from this kind of film. Nick Morton is a thief. <laughs> he is. He's a thief. He's basically uh, stealing these old relics and selling it on the black market for money. He works for the army and uses his position in the army to scout and go ahead and uh, kind of work, you know, work the sides of the black market. And um, with his partner, you know, Jake Johnson Vale. Uh, and he is definitely not interested in history, uh, has no real understanding of what it is that he deals in, and he gets caught up in this, this uh, terrifying adventure. I think Sophie is perfectly cast as the mummy, and what she brings to it, uh, a real uh, exotic uh, charm also, exotic energy and commanding performance from Sophia. It's exciting when people come together with this kind of project and we go, okay, let's, let's go make a movie. And that's how you feel, even though it's, it's massive in scale. But there is also that, that sense of and joy of creating something that I'm really, I love. Uh, you know, I love it. And I love this, this, this genre and this universe. Russell's a very powerful actor. He's a brilliant actor. And to have him play this character uh, I was excited when he said that he wanted to be part of it to see, okay, here you have this ballast also in, in the center of the film. And him playing that character, I'm very interested in him playing, uh, like that character, Jekyll. What, you know, I, I, it was really fun watching him create it and having, having the promise of that in the film. And that dynamic between the two of us and, and also with all the other cast. When I travel the world and uh, I meet many different people, I hear many different stories, I'm always looking at geography and thinking of, of different ways to entertain an audience. And I'd had this idea uh, of creating a zero-G sequence for some time. And when I read uh, the script and Alex had come up with the idea of a plane crash, I spoke with him. I said, listen, I think this is, this is the way to approach this. Uh, and I was very pleased to know that uh, and hear how excited he was about it in the studio um, to really create something that is visceral and terrifying for an audience. Uh, that, that was really the goal. How do we put them right on the edge of the seat? It's always my goal, uh, whether it's structure, uh, character, or you know, physical action. Uh, you know, how do we do that? And, and so that's where this started. Welcome to Prodigium, Mr. Morton. From the Latin, Monstrum Bell Prodigium. A warning of monsters. Forgive the state of things, we had very little time to prepare for our guest, and only the information Jennifer provided to go on. In truth, she works for us. It's not an exact science, this business. And the business being evil. Mr. Morton, recognize, contain, examine, 
destroy. She is by far the most ancient we've ever encountered. Now what we have with our Dr. Jekyll is that he already has something inside of him. He actually has to work to keep that thing suppressed. And I think it's probably not giving too much away to say that because he has that thing inside him, he has quite a uh, clear understanding of evil. Annabelle Wallace is luminous. I think she's just fabulous. Annabelle Wallace is a um, wonderful actress, always prepared. I saw her just deal so gracefully with um, a number of things that would have possibly put other actresses into a, a different state of mind, you know? And I think the best way to describe Annabelle is it just makes you feel better after you've been hanging out with her. You know, she's just, she's just a cool person, you know. I think Sophia is gonna be a revelation to people in this movie. I saw some of the stuff that she was doing physically. She's just amazing. What she can make her body do is just amazing. And she brings something very special you know, and I think the makeup design with what they've done with her character, it's crazy, man. She's got such a deep passion for film, Alex. I think that was really the most infectious thing about hanging out with him. And that's the thing that you realise very early on is he's, he's just his heart is so in the right place. So it just makes the experience more fun when people are approaching it with passion. We did a fight sequence together, Tom and I, in this film, and right when we first started talking about it, because it wasn't really fleshed out on the page, we just made a pact between us to uh, try and really do something with it, you know, and try and really get to a, a, a place with it. And um, you know, there's a whole bunch of different things in there. There's a bit of martial arts, there's a bit of boxing, there's some wire work, there's a couple of rugby moves, <laughs> one particular back slam onto the desk, which I think will rattle the theatres when you see it. There was this one Crusader set, Crusader tomb set. And I walked into it and it was just massive. It's the it's, it's sort of set you don't really get to work on these days because, you know, you might have a little detail in the corner and then there's a blue screen and they'll add things later on. But this was a full-on, old-fashioned film set, soaring ceilings, you know, you could feel the water coming out of the walls because they actually did, in fact, have water coming out of the walls and all of these broken tombs and everything, and it was fascinating. It was, it was brilliant. Um, my kids actually visited me while I was on that film and they got the same breathtaking experience as I did walking onto that set. It was amazing. Let me think! Just let me think! If anyone is listening, this is L-26, urgent, hot! Request dynamic precision strike at our mark! You did not just call it an airstrike! Oh, yes, I did! Where are you going? Don't leave me! There's nowhere to go! Oh, man, we're gonna die! Please, Bill! Let me think! We're gonna die because of you! Just let me think! What? I'm thinking! What are you thinking? I'm thinking we're probably gonna die here. I knew it! The chemistry with Tom was there almost immediately, and you know, I really say it with, you know, out any other reason besides the truth is that Tom is an incredible guy to work with, and especially as an actor, because he cares more than anybody I've ever met. So he loves acting in movies you know, way more than I do. <laughs> way more than anybody I've ever worked with. So you start realizing, like he and Alex and I talked about it after the meeting, he kind of fills you up with this like childhood enthusiasm where you're like, I want to make the movie that Tom sees. Everything about Alex Kurtzman has been 100% honest. Um, and as an actor, it's something that I really look for in a director. And that is when we're talking before we're on set, just tell me how you're going to be. 
because most of it's fine. I just want to know. And what Alex said was, it's going to be a lot of work and we're going to do a million different takes and I'm going to stretch it each way. You're entering these worlds that the detail work that even the camera doesn't pick up, like in back corners, what the people who built these sets and the set designers have done is they've created a three-dimensional space that just feels real. So the camera can point and be in any direction and it all works. And it's all like, you know, each little detail matters on this one. And so shooting it, it's just a really fun, cool experience. I think the scenes between Russell and Tom, you're going to see two of the best actors of, you know, a generation battling each other and not only acting opposite of each other, but fighting each other. And, you know, you know, there was, I watched them do a rehearsal once of the fight and Tom Cruise was like, I feel like I'm looking from the camera's point of view of Gladiator, you know, and you're like, these are two titans and they're both bringing it and neither is backing down. I saw her. She is real. <laughs> Hi, I'm David the Bruce. This has been a Visual Hollywood, where we take a femme-centric point of view of Hollywood. Making women visible, yes. I hope you did enjoy it. I know you enjoyed it. You learned a lot, didn't you? It's things you didn't know before, yeah? All right, well, you join us next time around. I'm David the Bruce. You be good now. You be good. See ya.